Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about immunohistochemistry or abbreviated as IHC. Immunohistochemistry is a technique where we use antibody to find the antigen present in cell, right? So inside our body, we have tissue. In different tissue, we have different types of cells. Now in those different types of cells, we want to find anti antigens. If there is any presence of antigen in those cells, we can detect that using antibody mediated assay to find those antigens in the cells that are directly taken from our body. That is called immunohistochemistry. That means you take the tissue sample and then apply some antibody coated, protein coated antibody to finally detect certain antigenic biomarkers inside our cell and tissue. And we can detect the presence of those antigen using the antibody mediated fishing out. And that process is called as immunohistochemistry. Why it is called immunohistochemistry? Immuno means it is related with the immunological reaction between antigen and antibody, right? Because there are antibody body we need to find, we use anti there are antigen we need to find, and we use antibody to find that antigen. So it's an immunological assay. Then histochemistry, because histo means you know dealing with tissue right so tissue is definitely applicable here because we take tissue sam samples directly and then we check for antigens in those tissue samples using antibody right that's why it's called immunohistochemistry because the dealing with tissue is called as histology right so now immunohistochemistry chemistry why because we usually fuse proteins or uh, colorigenic molecules, uh, they are called chromogenic also, chemiluminescence molecules or fluorescent tags with antibody to detect the antigen. So we use chemical molecules as well as immunological complex called antigen antibody complex to detect antigen that is present in our tissue, that is histological aspect. So that's why we call it immunohistochemistry or IHC. Now so the idea is simple, we take the tissue sample directly right let's say a person is having a trouble and we suspect that person may have a cancerous cell in his liver so we take the liver cell liver tissue out of it we make a thin section of it and we fix it in the slide just the process of histology the histological slide preparation involves several different stages of drying that cell taking the water out and slow make a very thin section using microtome and then fix it to the slide using cross reactive and fixative agents so we do all this stuff about the histological slide preparation. We do everything because we are taking the sample directly from the cell. In this case, we are suspecting that the person is having a cancer there, right? A cancerous cell there. So we take the liver cell and place it there. So once we have that cell in the tissue, I mean we have the tissue in the slide, sorry, and the cell in the tissue obviously. So we need to find the presence of certain biomarkers. Remember biomarkers? Biomarkers are, you know, identifying agents. They are the identifying agents for certain diseases, certain infections, certain physiological problems. For example, in cancer, there are certain proteins should be present in cells. Certain abnormal proteins, modified moieties of the proteins should be found inside the cell to show us that the cell is undergoing cancerous or cancer modifications. Uh, so in this case, we use that antibody to detect those modified proteins, detect those biomarkers so that we can tell that yes, the cell is undergoing cancer. So just take out the cell or do the treatment necessary. So this process of immunohistochemistry is extremely important for detecting different diseased physiological conditions by detecting biomarkers. So not only we can detect the diseased conditions, also we can find biomarkers in cell. We can find all the related physiological and pathological biomarkers that is present inside us a particular cell and the distribution of those biomarkers in the cell using this immunohistochemistry process. The idea is though very easy that we have the slide. The, there are sequential stages. The first stage is, you know, similar like the histological slide preparation. We have the slide and we take that sample, we fix that sample properly here. Once we fix that tissue sample properly in the slide, then we use the process of immunological assay, right? Now, idea here is there are markers present in the cell. We call them biomarkers, right? So, let's say there are biomarkers present. So we need to detect those biomarkers, we use them as antigens. So let's say these are the antigens, these are the protein contents. Now how can we find them? 
we use the extensively important strategy of antigen antibody reaction that is very very specific reaction between antigen and antibody to interact with themselves so use that specificity as a tool to detect this antigen we produce antibody that will specifically bind with this type of antigenic components inside the cell exact marker that we are finding we know the marker so we can produce the antibody in such a way so that the antibody can bind with that marker properly right so here we once you produce those antibody out there let's say these are the antibody then we can add the antibody so that the antibody binds with this exact specific antigenic sequence that we want to find right and then we get some certain kind of results in form of either color preparation in form of any, any chemiluminescence or in form of any fluorescence that we can detect with a detector and that will confirm the presence of that biomarker in that tissue sample right so now the antibody that we produce they can be of different types that antibody remember the first thing we are talking about is the tissue sample the sample preparation and fixation we have seen that second stage is the addition of antibody and the antibody that we use can be of two different type based on the different situation that we can let's say if we want to specifically interact with a specific antigen present in the cell not anything else only that antigen only that biomarker we produce monoclonal antibody you know monoclonal antibody means it will only interact with a one single epitope of antigen nothing else okay so it will bind specifically to one antigen only and that's what the monoclonal antibody so we can use that monoclonal antibody or we can use the polyclonal antibody if you want to interact with several different antigenic epitopes at a single time so in that case we use polyclonal antibody where one antibody can bind with different epitopes of the protein or of the antigen this is one type another thing that we can use is that sometimes we have the antibody that we have one antibody and that antibody now the idea is that we add antibody they are specific there are two different portions of antibody remember fc portion and fab portion with the help of fab portion the antibody can bind with the antigen now during this process let's say antigen is now bound with antibody antibody is interacting with antigen fine now the main thing is to get the data because we can't visualize everything we know the tissue sample we can dissect that prepare the slide we can see the tissue from outside a very small tiny tissue but nothing else no cell or no antibody antibody can be detected with naked eye so you don't know what's going on there after adding antibody whether they are bound or not bound how could you know to understand that we want certain reporter certain reporter element which will report us the exact phenomena here whether the antibody is bound or not and the reporter can be taken as the example of chromogenic chromogenic substance which will provide us some coloration right it can be due to in any kind of enzymatic reaction right what we can do is that we take this antibody and we attach this antibody modify it we attach an enzyme to the fc portion of the antibody we modify all of them with adding an enzyme to the fc portion okay and then we apply this antibody so if the antibody is bound it is also attached with the with this enzyme then we add the substrate of that enzyme and the enzyme will act on substrate and convert it into product which will give us some color right by looking at the color we can tell yes our antibody is specifically bound otherwise if our antibody does not bind with the, this this any of this antigenic contents then we wash every time adding antibody after adding antibody we wash this every time so that we dissolve all those unbound antibodies out of this place so once we wash them if it is not bound everything will be washed out so you won't see any coloration or color formation there okay that's a proof chromogenic enzyme reaction we can also use chemiluminescent substances or we can use fluorescence fluorescence tag 
any fluorescent tag we can attach a fluorescent tag instead of this a fluorescent tag let's say here we attach a fluorescent tag upon binding it will give us some coloration otherwise we won't see any coloration if it's not bound same thing they are providing us the information that this is the biomarker we find the biomarker that's why we see the coloration or fluorescence right now that's how we can detect the presence of certain antigen in the tissue sample another thing this type of antibody when you use attached with enzyme or fluorophore tag whatever this antibody once it is interacting directly with the antigen we call them primary antibody remember primary antibody sometimes what we can use we use two different antibody for this reaction instead of using this direct antibody first we use another type of antibody let's say this is the antigen these are the antigen we use first type of antibody that is simply finding uh, with the the antigenic content and attaching with it firmly specifically better attachment then we use another antibody which will target the first antibody and this second antibody is interacting with the enzyme or this second antibody is interacting with the fluorophore or something and then it gives us some coloration or some fluorescence so two different antibody system in this case the second antibody that we use we call it a secondary antibody okay and the first one is primary antibody so two antibody system can also be used right why we use sometimes the antibody that we tag here sometimes the antibody let's say for this one antibody process we need two important feature one is that the antibody should bind with the antigen very specifically and the attachment should be good and also it should have the ability to modify and attach with a protein at the fc portion not all antibodies have both of these properties together right to find the antibody which has both of these properties together will be costlier and expensive in the lab right so to exclude that we can use two different antibodies the first one is specific and with a good attachment with the with the antigen second one it can be modified easily so these are the two set of antibodies we can use instead of one directly okay so this both the way we can get our result now two examples of such chromogenic i mean enzyme reaction antibody we can use the enzyme the enzyme examples are horsch redis horsch redis peroxidase this is the enzyme that we use in case of western blotting sometimes western blotting also and also we can use alkaline phosphatase the common enzyme that we use to to check for enzyme reactions in different phases the chromogenic um, the color is color formation due to the uh, phosphatase activity so either way these are the enzymes that we can tag with fc portion of antibody to finally get our results in either way we can detect the presence of certain antigenic factors in our tissue directly remember no artificial means we take the sample directly from the tissue we just cross section the tissue make very tiny microatomic section apply it in the slide fix it right then we directly add the antibody we get the result fast effective reliable right that's why immunohistochemistry is a hugely important technique that we can use nowadays for different purpose we can use okay so so usually that is uh, the all about the immunohistochemistry and there is another technique out there that is called immunocytochemistry besides this immunohistochemistry which is interacting with slightly advanced but also artificial in in extra means uh, in compared with that we'll be talking about that immunocytochemistry in next video so i think this video is helpful if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this and share this video with your friends thank you